GLD80 has 20 mix output channels, all equipped with processing, which is based on the iLive console. To access this processing, simply select a channel using the green key above the fader. The settings for the processing are then displayed across the channel strip section at the top of the console and also on the touchscreen if no other menu is engaged. Let's select Orgs Mix 1. The current settings are displayed on the LEDs on the strip and the screen displays the channel number and name. The overview tab shows all the processing section in thumbnails. Edit the settings in the channel by using the knobs and buttons in the channel strip. You can see the resulting signal flow in the channel on the meters in each section. You can see details full screen by either touching each thumbnail or its tab along the top of the screen. Touching the cell key will also bring up the processing section full screen too. Each section has an in-out key which illuminates when the processing is in circuit so you can make adjustments using the controls or screen before engaging the section. You can hear the audio signal at any part of the channel path by pressing and holding down the select key. You can name the channel and set the colour by pressing the first tab on the screen top. An on-screen keyboard pops up for you to enter the name and you can choose its colour from this palette. This is what is displayed on the channel LCD on the fader strip. The parametric EQ has four bands. You sweep select the frequency using the upper rotary control and then adjust the cut and boost with a lower control. To adjust the Q setting for each band, press and turn the frequency rotary. LED eyebrows give a guide to the settings while the on-screen display shows a graphical representation of the resultant EQ curve. There is an option on the pop-up to colour fill the graphs. You can also adjust the EQ by dragging the curve points or entering precise data in the value fields. Q range is 1.5 to 1 9th octave. Low and high band types can be selected to be pass, bell or shelving types and there is a global option to enable the full range adjustment for the input and output EQ bands. The compressor has two main controls, ratio and threshold. Again the threshold point is displayed over the channel signal and the gain reduction LEDs will kick in as the threshold is reached. Makeup gain can be tweaked by pressing and turning the ratio encoder. On the touch screen you have additional controls for attack and release, sidechain filter for frequency conscious response and you also have two manual and two auto types of compressor in the drop down list. Of course you can save your compressor setups to the user library and also copy and paste them into other channels. There is a third octave graphic equalizer on every mix out. To access it, touch the thumbnail or tab on the mix processing screen. The EQ bands can be adjusted by highlighting them on the screen and using the rotary control. Library items can be saved and recalled here too. Selected mixes can display the GEQ settings on the faders simply by hitting the fader flip button in the bottom right hand corner or the one on the screen. The current values of the graphic sliders is displayed under each frequency shown in the cells which are now coloured red. First press displays bands up to 1K and the second starts at 500Hz and ends up to 16K. To reset a band simply touch the select key on that strip. The master fader for the mix is always shown on the right. A really cool feature on GLD and iLive is that the AFL signal is sent to the real-time analyzer and is displayed across the channel's source meters above the fader strips, so when you hit the PFL button on the mix showing the GEQ on faders, you can quickly identify hot frequencies and the relevant fader to grab. In the PFL page, you can auto-link the channel PFL to the select key so that when you are auditioning different output mixes, the GEQ fader flip always displays the mix you're listening to. For monitor engineers, you can also auto-link the mix key so that the input sources on faders are shown when listening to a mix. Once a channel is set up, you can also save the whole setup as a library item. You do this from the overview screen, just press library, store, name the file and press apply. This can now be recalled into other mixes. There is an option to recall settings for a preamp patched to the external input. Touchscreen can also display a map of all the routing assignments and the levels under sources to each mix or bus. Pressing routing button or tab and you will see under each tab the sources that are assigned on and off to that mix and also to toggle pre and post fade sends. Assignments to the 16 DCA groups can also be seen and set up here. Each of the 20 mix channels has an external input patch. 
On the screen we can assign a socket or digital source such as USB or option port to feed into the bus. Press and hold select to hear that source in the cans or monitor. Output channels have a line delay adjustable up to 170 milliseconds, useful for time alignment of speaker systems. The pop-up allows you to choose the value to be displayed as milliseconds, meters, feet or samples. You can at any time copy, paste and reset any processing point by pressing and holding the function key whilst touching select. This is a great way to quickly set up a few channels with similar settings. Here we copy the EQ from an output channel to other mixes. You can also copy and paste whole channels and between individual processing sections and whole channels. Note that pressing reset on a channel or section restores it to the default values. To patch an output channel mix to a socket or connection such as an XLR output on the GLD80 or one of the audio racks, choose the tab for the physical location on the I.O. screen and tap on the socket or channel, and choose from the drop-down list the output you want to assign to that location.